Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Brian Goberts, Chief Operating Officer, Deputy Director General of Research, Sustainable Production Systems and Integrated Programs and Director of Integrated Development Program, who will give a welcome message. Dr. Goberts, the floor is yours. Thanks, uh, Isabel. And, and once again, we, we find each other in this virtual space. Um, I think we were all uh, wondering if we really were going to sell here in Mexico and, and in many other countries. It was a celebration of Mother's Day on Monday, some others on Sunday, and in some other cultures, there were some other uh, festivities. We have all been wondering that we were really going to go, if we really want to go, going to go twice to these festivities under COVID times. And here it is, we did but I'm also sure that there's light at the end uh, of the tunnel. And if there's anything good that has come out of, um, of, those, um, of, of these difficult times, that is that we are now more and more used to just grabbing simply a quick seminar online with knowledge from all, all over the world. And I think that is something that we should sustain even when we go back uh, to, to our uh, regular uh, way of working. Also, also today's presentation is for sure a, a presentation in spirit of the one uh, CIMIT effort in which uh, always all work we do uh, is maybe presented by somebody, but it is the, the result of a strong collaborative effort with farmers, farm technicians and advisors, researchers, and, 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 and of course it's made possible thanks to, to our donors. And, and this case is not different. Eduardo as hub uh, manager will, will present the work that is inspired by the scientific backing of Ravi Gopal and of course, uh, putting in the field by Eugenio Tejas, who at, uh, on his term works with hundreds of farmers that are not uh, necessary on, this, on, the, on the forefront of our slide, but they are for sure at the forefront of what we do every day, and they're the center of our uh, attention. Having that said, I want to thank Eduardo for putting together this seminar. He was born and raised in Mexico City, where he studied food chemistry and gained ex uh, experience in the fields of food science, human nutrition, and r and He volunteered for several different initiatives, such as food waste strategies, urban agriculture, and pursued then there an MSc in uh, organic agriculture and agroecology at, yes, Wagner Uni University, and became experienced and interested in sustainable food systems and food security. Eduarda has also been involved in analysis, design, and assessment of farming systems, as well as the development of methodologies and protocols for monitoring and evaluation processes. When in his spare time, and he's not going to the field in, in Yucatan or in Campeche or, or, or not uh, analyzing data, he enjoys swimming, so for sure uh, he's in the right hub, uh, practicing uh, slackline, dancing, cooking, and reading. And uh, we will make an agreement here and now with Eduardo the next time we want to see a dancing video uh, as part of your next uh, seminar. Thanks, Eduardo, and uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bram. Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can, I can commit to that, but I will, I will for sure try. Um, <clears throat> okay. Thank you very much for the introduction and for this, uh, oh, sorry, for this uh, space here. <clears throat> um, well, I'm very, very happy to share a seminar with, with everyone again. So good morning, good afternoon or evening, uh, wherever you, you are. And I hope everyone is, is doing well and taking care of themselves and their, uh, their families and their close ones. And I, I want to start by uh, saying, uh, well, the title of this seminar, of this presentation is Crop Diversification in Maize Systems in the Yucatan Peninsula, which is in the south, southeast of uh, Mexico. Uh, a little bit of experiences and challenges we have found. And uh, this is uh, uh, talking to some colleagues, uh, my supervisor, some colleagues, uh, advisors uh, about this presentation. Uh, it was important to me, uh, for me to, to put emphasis in that it's not just crop diversification just because, you know, that there is a reason. And we in CIMIT, uh, maybe our our emphasis is in maize systems, at least in this area where, where I am, where there is no wheat. Uh, so the crop diversification is, is uh, in order to improve uh, maize systems, no? which is maybe one of the core of CIMIT. So to improve the whole system where the maize is grown, where a lot of uh, smallholder farmers depend on, 
made. So that I just want to make emphasis in, in that. And also that uh, there are three names there. Uh, me, I'm Eduardo Tobar, I'm the, the hub manager. However, of course, I'm only the spokesperson here. This is a, a work, as Bram very well said, uh, this is a teamwork. And I would say not only these uh, three names there, but a lot more people, no? more technicians, more allies, collaborators, because that's our, um, that's one of our focuses, no? to, to not work alone. We have a lot of alliances and collaborations, uh, at least in this region everywhere. So uh, this is a work of many people and of course farmers and families who have uh, uh, given us a lot of, of their time and uh, space and knowledge. So it's a collaborative effort for sure. Okay, um, I'm gonna start. I hope this goes away. So, all right, um, well, this first slide, I'm calling it connecting the dots. Uh, connecting the dots is, uh, is because last year, around this time, I presented another seminar, which was my first one, by the way, uh, about uh, agroecosystems and resilience, or resilient what? Resilience in the time of COVID. And I talked about uh, a little bit about some systems characteristics, such as resilience uh, and other, um, with, the, with the limited knowledge I have about resilience, of course. And some strategies that here in, the, in this region, in the hub, we have been doing or carrying out, such as the crop diversification, among others. No? And so this is a little bit of a continuation of this seminar. That's why it's connecting the dots, because I already talked about this last year in a general uh, context. And now I want to focus on this crop diversification strategy that we, uh, we've been testing, validating, and implementing in the, in the peninsula. And, but this is a little bit more of, of uh, more results that have been um, uh, that, that are that are there in the last couple of years. So, okay, uh, why why crop diversification strategy? I think there are many reasons, and uh, one of the, one of these reasons is I think we're all acquainted with these uh, images or these studies, the the famous planetary boundaries. This is just a little bit of context of why, why it was important to have a crop diversification strategy. And in these studies, by these researchers over, over there, you see, um, well, I have, uh, have uh, shown that um, different elements or different parameters have reached maybe a very uncertain or uncertain limits or are in a very uncertain area. And it's a very high risk uh, in general, uh, if we talk about limits of what what's possible or what, what what's good for the planet, let's say, you no, know? um, maybe I'm I'm sure there's someone here in the audience that knows way more about this uh, than me, so I would be happy also to to to, to learn from you more about your interpretation of these studies, and and well, this uh, this planetary boundaries at least in, in a general sense, it, they show that the nitrogen cycles in the planet are some of the boundaries that are already, we already crossed, no? So there's, uh, there are a lot of issues in the nitrogen cycle. Uh, and another one, another limit or another parameter is the, in the top graphic, you, you see the genetic diversity. And in the bottom one, you see biodiversity loss. You cannot really see, it's quite unclear, but I can tell you is biodiversity loss. So, this shows that biodiversity, uh, not just agricultural, but biodiversity in general in, in the planet, it's a, it's a very uh, risky parameter, or risky characteristic. So, because it is very uncertain of how, how much uh, has been, uh, I don't know, maybe extinct or is not functional, any, functional anymore. So it is a, an important parameter that we should consider in our intervention and strategy you know, for uh, uh, sustainable development. Um, so this is one of the reasons. Another reason is uh, the challenges that here in this region, in the peninsula of Yucatan, have been identified by many people, including farmers. And we have seen some of these challenges uh, are well, monocrop of maize. Uh, of course, the industry and, the, and our consumption of, of everyday tortilla consumer, uh, they, they, uh, 
they're involved in this, no? That's that's uh, that's the reason why there is a lot of monocrops for maize because of the high demand, and and maybe a little bit of um, well, maybe some people don't know that it's possible to do it in other ways. But monocrops of maize is, is one of the challenges. Uh, <clears throat> the agrochemical use, for sure. Uh, I'm not saying that using agrochemicals in general is, is bad, but it's more more the way they are used. Uh, I, I remember one one uh, one experience here in the peninsula. We we visited a farmer, and he was saying uh, that they use a, a herbicide that it was completely banned. I don't remember exactly the name now, but it was uh, it's it's in the red or even black list. No, it's it's banned. And it's it's very toxic, and they are still using it. So they they still get some of these uh, toxics that are even forbidden. They still get them and they use them and sometimes without control. No? Sometimes they, the, the, the common practice is that, well, if, if one gram of this thing is helping me, maybe why not put in two grams? No? It's better, better a little bit more than, than, than what they said. So th there's a lot to be done there. <clears throat> Another challenge is the constant weeds, pests and diseases in this area. Weeds, uh, well, this is a very, it's a tropical and very humid place. So it is uh, also a challenge. Uh, pests and diseases, I, I put there micro and macro. This, uh, I, I mean, this micro is like insects and diseases, you know, like microorganisms, but also macro, uh, not as, maybe as, as fauna, like uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's an animal similar to a raccoon, but from this region, it's called a, a pejon. So this is another, it's just an animal, it's not a pest, but it becomes when, when when they damage all the crops. Yeah. So that's another challenge. Uh, nutrition is, and household food security, of course, that, that is a challenge. That's uh, one of the main focuses of CIMIT. So food security should be on top of, of this. Uh, and diversifying income and activities, uh, especially in times of like COVID, but any other times where sometimes if a harvest doesn't happen, then there is no money or no food. So it's important to diversify income and activities for, for farmers. And families, and uh, lastly, uh, limited access to local markets. No? For example, in the I can tell you in the south of Campeche, in a region called Calakmul, um, well, it's very hard to to, to reach. You know? It takes a lot of hours to get there, and the the, the roads are very uh, bumpy, and, and they're not properly. For uh, let, let's say, it doesn't make easier the, the transport of of crops. For example, if somebody wants to sell. To the capital of the state, it's very hard to go there. No, it takes a lot of time. There's no proper infrastructure, so and many other factors. But this is a challenge: the markets in general. Um, this is I will go fast with this one. This one is uh, I use it's another context why it's important to have this strategy. And in general, I think we all have heard about the uh, Convention on Biological Diversity from the UN uh, Environment Program. I'm not going to read all this, but uh, I think it's, uh, they, they make a point where biodiversity is, is essential for ecosystem services and, and is just important in general. Uh, I, I want to say that uh, biodiversity is the foundation of ecosystem services essential to sustain agriculture and human well being. Uh, and that biodiversity and agriculture are strongly interrelated because while that biodiversity is critical for agriculture, can also contribute to conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity. So uh, again, we, we see the importance of keeping, maintaining and promoting, uh, in this case, agrobiodiversity. Okay, um, to start with some uh, information, with some data, According to uh, this strategy, Frijol para Mexico, bean consumption in Mexico is 10.5 kilograms per person per year, um, compared to 2.5 uh, in, the, in, the, in the world average. However, in the last 30 years, this consumption has decreased by 50%. You know, uh, because of many factors, among the many others, uh, a lot of meat consumption. But uh, according to a study from Conacy, they said that um, it should be around 25 kilograms per person per year. So we are under that uh, recommendation. And of course, this is only for, for beans, a specific, a specific kind of bean. And I'm here I'm talking about different legumes and even oil crops. So this is, it applies only for, for the 
think for some of them. Um, legumes in general, not just beans, are good sources of, of protein, of fiber, different kinds of fiber, soluble, insoluble, iron, vitamins, the, the whole in the range of vitamin B, uh, potassium, among others. They have a low glycemic index, which is very important, especially for people with diabetes or metabolic syndrome. A sodium fat, uh, except uh, oil crops. Of course, uh, oil crops are, are known for their oil content, so it doesn't apply here. Um, they're important in combination with cereals, such as uh, maize, of course, for their amino acid complementarity. You know? they, they bring together a very good mix of uh, amino acids for a good human nutrition. Uh, I, I made, by the way, I, I made my, uh, I did my, my bachelor studies thesis in a legume no? called uh, yellow pea, which is a regular pea. It's called yellow, but it's actually green. If you see it, it's a little, a little pea. I did my, my thesis with that, and it came to the, we came to the conclusion that it's actually a good source of protein, uh, vegetable protein. No? It's a good uh, protein if you want to substitute meat, for example. It has better uh, uh, well, not better, but it has a good amount of protein and lots of vitamins and etc. But it, it is very interesting to know. Uh, and no wonder why 2016 was declared the International Year of Pulses, which is legumes and others, but in, in the dry, uh, dry presentation by the UN. Okay, um, so this is important for, uh, this is something we, we talk about and we implement in the program where I, I work with, which is IDP, Integrated Development Program. So not just cropping systems, not just maize systems, or not just uh, bean systems, you know, but agri-food systems in general. So this involves, involves from since the, the, the food is being produced, all the way to distrib distribution, um, all the cultural and human aspects, and even to the consumer or consumption part. Um, yeah, uh, so it is important to focus on the whole system, no? not, not, not just on the crop. Uh, I think there's a microphone open. Well, okay. Um, so it's, it's important to focus on, this, on the whole system. This is the, the point or the message of this, of this slide. And how this uh, strategy uh, started? Well, it started because here in the hub we have a strategy based on the needs of the region, uh, on the problematics, on the main, main, main problems. Uh, this strategy is based on three components, uh, increase and stabilize productivity, increase resilience of the farming system, and contribute to food security. So you can see uh, the crop diversification strategy, legumes, oil crops, and others. They, uh, they can contribute to these uh, components of the strategy. So this is how we started. You know, it started from the strategy. There are certain problems and needs in the region. We have a strategy. What responds to this strategy? Well, this is one of the of these uh, activities that responds. Also, on the right uh, side, I put again the challenges because, of course, the challenges are part of, of, uh, of how we started. No, there are certain challenges, so we are going to tackle them with this uh, crop diversification strategy. And lastly, projects, no? uh, projects and donors who help us to carry out and to have the, the, the funding and the activities. And the, it's like the fuel to keep the machine going in order to perform these activities. Some of these projects are uh, strengthening market access for smallholder farmers here uh, in the state of Campeche, in this case, uh, by Walmart Foundation. Uh, also harnessing capacity for resilience and the adoption of sustainable innovations in rural communities, also in the state of Campeche, in, in the case of Peninsula, also founded by, um, financed by Walmart Foundation, and lastly, Los Agrocultivos para Mexico, uh, with, uh, together with SABE. So these are where were the fields, the projects and the, the financing that we needed to, to carry out these activities of the strategy. Um, Okay, I'm sorry, I cannot see the top of my screen because this is blocking, but this uh, I will not go into detail. It's a little bit too much text and information. I'm sorry for that. But I, in general, the message I want to, to tell you here is that in 2019, we started with some field trials. Um, and the left side on the other screen, you can see Febe, which is the summer of 2019. We carried out, uh, I, I, hear, I, I give the credit a lot here to Eugenio. And, Dr. Ravi, 
uh, as an essay of, with intercropping uh, mode or intercropping systems, different crops, you know, such as sunflower, soybean, peanuts, or ground nuts, they know known in Africa, pigeon pea, uh, different cycles, uh, other peanut, dolica, or dolicus, other sorghum, sesame, monk bean, cow. You know? Uh, different legumes and oil crops you can see here, and some cover crops as well, like tolica. So there was a first essay intercropping, of course, intercropping with maize, which is the maize issue. And on the right side, you can see the summer of 2019, same, we had a crop rotation essay with some other crops, as you can see there in the screen. And it's important, uh, some notes here. Uh, these were, of course, rain fed, which is the main uh, type of farming uh, there is here in the peninsula. Native maize. Uh, so these crop rotations and intercropping were carried were done with the uh, native maize, uh, such as uh, native maize such as shinoknal, uh, which are some of the maizes that the Mayan people use here. But also some improved native maize from Inipap, for example. So we we use these two. Um, from these essays, we gather important data, no? such as the flowering days, harvesting days, uh, the yields, diseases, and very important observations and behavior. No? That sometimes we honestly we forget to do. We just go and take data, but it's very important to, to see and to perceive, no? use the senses to, to smell, to, to see. To, that's very important. Sometimes we don't do it. So we gather a lot of data. And uh, and well, I, I, can, I can tell you, I can share a little bit of, of the general uh, some of the general information of some of the crops uh that we are still learning by the way it's, uh, we, we haven't become became experts yet but we are learning uh, as we do also so pigeon pea is one of them in spanish it's called the lenteja de milpa or chicharo ganul some of the of the benefits of this legume crop are uh, of course it's a nitrogen fixation and symbiosis with microorganisms Soil compaction. Uh, well, you can see some some pictures there on the right side of this plant, so you can see it's quite a big, uh, quite large. Weed management uh, is is uh, it brings so much shade that it uh, gives a very good uh, weed management. There was no application of herbicides there. A beneficial insects. Uh, many of these crops are useful for this. In the first essays, we we went to visit a couple of times and and. We immediately saw so many insects flying around, no? so that was good. Uh, fodder, some of these uh, crops are used as fodder. This is one of them, and of course, human consumption. This is this is actually nothing new. This lenteja milpa is, is being used there in the region for all, already more time. No, it's not our achievement to bring it to the region. It's been there for a long time. But we've been doing more essays to intercrop and to use different um, uh, seeding arrangements, etc. Uh, it's actually part of a, of a local diet for some people. So some some important data, days to flower, days to harvest. You can see in general, this is a very long uh, uh, crop. It takes like uh, maybe seven or eight months, the whole cycle. Uh, it can be grown in both cycles, in summer and in winter. And it could be used in intercropping, in rotation, or even relay, you know, using the humidity or the moisture in the soil from the previous crop, such as, uh, such as maize. <coughs> Seeds are native, native seeds, uh, and plant density 26 per meter. Uh, the mung, mung bean, we um, call mungo. This is rather a short, short cycle crop. It can be grown in both cycles, also in the cropping, rotation, and relay. Um, native seeds and densities per meter. Uh, some of the benefits, again, uh, similar to the previous one, nitrogen fixation, a lot of beneficial insects. Uh, so this is uh, pest management, no? we can call it natural pest control. With management as well, you can see, it's, it's, uh, you can see in the picture on top, uh, it expands a lot, like if it was a cover crop. Human consumption is very good uh, if, uh, eaten. I, I have tried it and I can recommend it to you if you haven't tried it, it's very good. And it's drought, drought tolerant, which is very important for some regions in the state of Campeche, such as the south. Calakmul, uh, for example, a region very complicated for water. So I'm sorry, there's a mistake. It says drown, but it's drought tolerant. And you can see some pictures. No, it's it's a, a very nice crop, quite uh, short, and it has the, the the pots become black once they're ready to, uh, to harvest. Monk bean. 
these are some other crops, uh, other pictures of the monkey. You can see some, some flowers and, and the black uh, pods on the top right uh, part of the screen. So just to show you some experiences in the field, adapted to local cuisine. I don't know if you can see there, but that's actually a, a dish, it's a, a piece of meat with, um, with, with some of these uh, monk beans somebody cooked and shared with us. So it's, it's, it's a nice thing. And it can be used uh, as a cover crop. No? You can see, especially in the second picture. Um, uh, Kaupi, Kaupi or Espelon, as uh, they call it in Maya, is also a, a short cycle crop. Um, can be grown in, in two different cycles in, in summer and winter, intercropping, rotation, and relay as well. Uh, so, very similar to the previous crops. Uh, also in, in terms of benefits, no? very, very similar. In this case, the, the beans, the, the little spelons, can be eaten, but also the whole pot can be eaten. This is also a crop that has been here for, for a long time. No? It is also nothing new. This is actually very important for the local cuisine. Uh, during the Day of the Dead uh, time, There's a, there are many dishes that have this, this, uh, this ingredient or this crop. So it's also nothing new. It's more about how we are uh, doing the management of the crop, no? In different, uh, again, intercropping, rotation, etc. Um, Cacahuate, groundnut, or peanut, uh, also another crop that has been there for for some time, but we're trying different arrangements. Uh, more people that actually didn't know the crop or didn't know if it was possible to 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 plant or to sow this crop in some regions of the state of Campeche or even in the state of Quintana Roo as well. They have been trying to uh, test it and introduce it in their systems. So this is a good cash crop to, to sell it. I will share an experience later about this. Um, this is a, a summer summer crop, um, good for soil compaction we've seen in some, some places because of, it grows under the sun, so it helps with the soil compaction, even though I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I'm, uh, I think it grows not so deep. So yeah, it, it might help soil compaction, not as much as other crops. Human consumption, of course, weed management and nitrogen fixation as well. This is a great intercropping we make, for example. Sunflower uh, or girasol, uh, again, can be grown in, in both cycles and different modes or schemes of, of uh, planting. The seeds in this case can be native, but also hybrid, no? hybrid seeds. Um, uh, planting with or seed end density, four to eight seeds per meter. Um, some of the benefits here, beneficial insects. We, we saw this uh, a lot once the flowers are there. That's very uh, tangible. Weed management and allelopathy. No? This is a crop that, that can produce those chemicals that uh, prevent other crops to be around, you know, have some chemical uh, competition mechanisms. Uh, fodder, fodder for, for cattle that in, in the state of Campeche at least, you can find it a little bit in the south of the state, so it helps uh, with that. Human consumption as the, as the seeds, of course, as either oil uh, or, um, or snacks or something. And ornamental, some farmers uh, managed to sell some, some flowers to get a little bit of income. So that's also good. And of course, it looks beautiful in the field, no? maybe in a, in, a, in a crop around the field. Uh, some pictures there, pictures there. And well, it's also drought tolerant, important for the south of the, of the region in Calakmul again, this drought sensitive uh, area. It has been seen that it, that it's, it's a good option there. And while making this presentation, I was taking a look at the pictures and I didn't realize before until now that there are, there are actually a lot of bees in these pictures. So six bees in total in only these two pictures. So I can, I can show you what I told you before about the, the beneficial insects there. Uh, so that was, uh, that was an oil crop, the previous one. I started with uh, legumes, uh, with um, yeah, legumes, human consumption. Then I, I did uh, oil crop, which is uh, some flour in this case. And now uh, some cover crops, dolica, dolica or the dolicus in this case. Uh, this is also can be a summer or a winter crop, uh, different schemes, intercrop, uh, rotation or relay. Um, also as a cover crop, it has a lot of benefits. Of course, the cover crop per se is a, is, is a benefit, no? it covers a lot. 
it can cover a land when when there's like a fallow when when uh, sorry when, when after a drop when you want to grow anything for some mechanized farmers maybe you can just cover the soil with the leaves to prevent erosion or other things um we haven't tried yet uh, at a large scale with uh, with mechan mechanized farmers but that would be interesting now, of course nitrogen fixation uh, some insects because of all the flowers you have weed management you know? and also can be used as fodder because it has a good amount of protein and some pictures there and another another cover crop crotalaria i don't know how to say this in english i don't know if that's the name in english I'm sorry but you can see the pictures there it's also a, a cover crop um, of course, brings some nitrogen to the soil. It has a lot of beneficial insects around, helps with weed management, and also great uh, crop for fodder no? for cattle and for sheep. Can be grown summer and winter. Very, uh, very good, um, uh, flexible, and adapt. Uh, it has shows good uh, adaptation. Um, and you can see some pictures there. You can see why it's, it's a, such a good thing with weed management. Now it doesn't grow anything once this crop has grown a little bit. Okay, uh, those were pictures and, and information about the crops, some stuff that we have learned from them. Um, also, after 2019, so in 2020, we carried out some field trials again um, in the summer, uh, but also in the winter in this time. In the previous, in the 2019, I was showing you field trials in the north uh, and in the center of the state of Campeche. In this case, we also went south uh, to the to the area of Calakmul, where I was telling you. Uh, I'm not going to read the, the whole thing, but we expanded to the south. We did again the center and the north essays uh, or field trials, and again we did uh, we try or tested intercrop and rotation some of the same crops to have the like, repetitions uh, in, in, in time um, but also included new new crops that we are still analyzing that's why i'm not presenting results or anything about for example uh, amaranth or sesame not yet but maybe in the future i, I hope i can present something and this time we had a, a big healthy trial no? uh, so many lines i mean it's a crop that has been used here for a long time so even the national or the the regional university, the Wadi in, in Yucatan, they even have their own varieties, so we also try, uh, tested them. And important to note here, again, it was rain fed with native maize, and got, oh, we gather all this important data I was telling you before. So we did, in general, the, the message here is we, we carried out uh, essays or field trials again uh, with new new arrangements and new crops. Um, some of the of the data I can I can show with you I can share with you. Um, for example, mung bean, which is one of the, the ones that is showing better results or more more interest from farmers, is has 2.5 months of cycle, which is very short. So you can have up to three cycles per year probably in a very intense intense system. So in that is between August and December, uh, harvest between November and March. Can be used in a rotation on the or intercrop. I think I forgot the, the uh, relay crop as well. And it uh, shows uh, a 0.6 tons per hectare of uh, yield with a production cost of around 4,500 uh, pesos. You know? uh, if you divide it by, by 20, you can get US dollars. Divide that by, by 20 per hectare. Uh, then peanut, peanut, which is uh, a crop that is already being grown in the, in the region. Um, you can see the data there. I don't think there's a need to say everything, but we, we managed to get a yield of 1.5 tons per hectare with a cost of 6.5 uh, or 6,500 pesos. Um, some flour with yields of around one ton per hectare. Uh, cowpea around 0.5, uh, half ton per hectare, and pigeon pea uh, or carogandur with 1.7 uh, tons per hectare. No? Uh, so these are just some of the, of the, of the, the yields. Of course, it's, if I just put the yields there, it doesn't really make a lot of sense if we don't compare something. But uh, if we think about that these crops are just like an addition to a maize system, no? again, talking about the maize system, uh, it's a good addition because in some cases it just provides a, an extra um, 
extra food or good nutrition for family who whoever eats the, the, these drugs whoever uses them as um, self-consumption but also as extra income in case they sell them no? such as the sunflowers for example so that's why i put this tiny note uh, under the table it says on average may still uh, were 300 kilograms per hectare more in the intercropping system. So in this, on this uh, uh, rows you see in the, in the table, compared to maize monocrops. No, for example, uh, uh, for for improved maize, this improved maize from Inifap, I was I was telling you, um, they eat, in a monocrop it can usually produce 2.6, 2.7 tons per hectare, and in an intercrop uh, with a with a legume. Because of all the all this uh, interaction there is between the crops, uh, it showed uh, around three tons per hectare. And in a native maize, uh, Chernal, uh, Nantel, etc., they are usually maybe one ton or even a bit less. So it showed even up to 1.3 tons per hectare no? in a native crop because of this synergy. So you get more maize for for usually for self consumption of this farmer or family, but also you get another crop no? for consumption or also for 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 markets. Uh, to sell, so so we can we can we can really see the benefit there. And and I also want to share some. Um, I think we are good on time, but if not, please let me know. Um, some some uh, experiences with farmers. This picture doesn't really uh, go accordingly to the text. Uh, I just realized that a bit too late, but it doesn't correlate to the to the the image and the text. But these are some images that we, we took indeed from some farmers. So first one, uh, Silverio Ake, a, an innovative farmer who implemented diversification in order to have nut and nutritious products for his family. You know, he started, uh, he sold a couple of times uh, cowpeas and, and peanuts, which he didn't sell before, sold before. Um, Raul uh, Vitorin, there's no C there, I'm sorry for the mistake, Raul Vitorin, He's a very young farmer. Uh, he's a real entrepreneur who has become interested in planting native corn in the region where these seeds are not being sown anymore. He also produces land-raised uh, peanuts that he sells uh, himself. He goes all the way to Cancun, this very touristy area in the peninsula, and he sells them directly. So he gets a good income from that. And in 2020, uh, he started sowing or planting cowpea and, and beans to reproduce the seeds. And multiply and well he's convinced uh, of the value of legumes for his uh, for his family uh, by the way that picture under there is a, is a he's not a farmer he's a, a student that was harvesting some flowers and they were going to be sold uh, as ornaments no, or flowers uh, javier javier garcia another farmer from campeche he obtained a significant income by sowing and selling le legumes such as pecan and black beans. Uh, I can tell you what black beans was a bit the, the, the intervention from this project. However, pecan is another thing very interested that I didn't, I didn't share because it's all not, not really part of our intervention. He was already sowing some pecan, but it's a very interesting crop. Uh, it's hard to explain actually. Uh, it's kind of like a mystical animal, one of those that have like a, you know, the head of a bull, the body of a tiger, the tail of a lion, and the the legs of a, of a hippopotamus. It's like this, no? Because it's a little bit of everything. Hikama is actually a legume. However, it looks like a like a tuber because it's under it's like a root on the ground. And it, we eat it raw and it tastes like a fruit. No? It's like legume, uh, tuber, but a fruit. So very interesting crop. And it's shown, it's uh, sown here in the region. Recently, he has also included mung beans also, and he sold uh, Sold them in, in the local market, so he got a little bit of extra income from this. And these monk beans are getting very well adapted to the local cuisine. And the, I believe this is the last one. Marino Cruz Cruz, a great friend also. This is a farmer who, besides selling corn and corn dough in his community, he successfully sold uh, black beans and black and white cowpeas. He also had a positive experience with velvety uh, and crotalaria as cover crops and that he incorporated in his agroforestry system because he's also working with Sembrando Vida. And in addition, another great entrepreneur, 
he had when we were talking and he had ideas to because he sells the corn dog so he had ideas of incorporating uh, some some bean or some legumes flour into the dog to give them an added value no, in terms of money but also in terms of nutrition and in the pictures you can see some uh, family there um, harvesting some cowpea seeds and on there in the bottom some uh, members of the community the farmers um, with, with some some flower recently harvested uh, flower. And, and well this is the, the last slide I want to share some of the challenges we have seen from this uh, all this activity a lot of activity happening in the field some of these challenges in terms of the crop diversification strategy and the we call them alternative crops legumes oil crops cover crops are the following uh, post harvest uh, in terms of post harvest uh, her hermetic technologies or storage technologies have been already being validated and tested a lot and we already have results very positive ones uh, however the adoption is not as much as we would like it to be it's not broadly adopted and some of these uh, the, the obstacles to this are the price of also some commercial technologies so such as this hermetic bag plastic bag and it's not easy to, to get no, because they are a little bit uh, expensive and also uh, it's not as easy to get so we're working in that this year we're doing a lot of promotion uh, activities such as events and others in the field to promote this more because they are results and they show they show a positive balance no, in terms of results so it's slowly getting attention another uh, challenge is the, the market and the, and the demand in general, uh, local and regional markets, uh, like for, for farmers to, to sell, as I said before, all the infrastructure around, it's not easy to, to go and sell a crop uh, to another city because of, I don't know, maybe they don't even have a truck or maybe the, the road is flooded, no? or maybe it's just not properly. So it takes a lot, lot of time and gasoline to get there. Um, so including transport infrastructure, logistics, among others, a lot of factors here in market and demand. The machinery, even though this is something we have not really worked yet too much with, um, but technologies to facilitate labor, such as sewing, uh, we, it would be good to calibrate some, some implements or, or machines to sew uh, different legumes and other crops. <clears throat> and also post-harvest, no? not, just, not just storage in post-harvest, but also post-harvest like cost removal uh, uh, among others. So this is also a challenge because we, we also haven't spent a lot of time in this, our research is doing this. But the challenge is there. In, in terms of seed systems, so there is a lot of interest and it's, there is growing interest in oil crops, legumes and cover crops. However, now we face the challenge of seed availability. Access and quality uh, for seeds is lacking. Um, we're also working on that. This year is a very strong year for, for that. There's going to be a lot of activity. Some farmers are working on producing their own seeds. Uh, however, there are already some commercial seeds available, such as sunflowers. No? Uh, but this is still a challenge. And seed systems, part two, um, is storage in the community, in community seed banks, is, is important because of how the communities are managed and arranged. And they produce their own seeds. But in this region, uh, relative humidity in the air and temperatures are a big, big challenge. No? So we, we need to find a way to doing that properly without affecting the, the quality of, of, the, of the seeds that are stored. In, in this case, sorry, uh, we are working, for example, with Gersia uh, Zavala and Dr. Filippo uh, Woodson um, from, from the seed bank. So they, they're helping us with this. So if you're listening, thank you very much. Um, uh, organization in, in terms of groups of farmers or not just farmers no group of groups of communities um sometimes they are not really working together so we're working a lot in, in trying to build uh, groups trying to make them realize that it's very important if they want to uh, ask for financing to create a new seed bank you know a community seed bank well it's important to be maybe a group in order to get some financing or or even to manage the community seed bank you now you need like a group like a committee um, but also for market access for different reasons, which is helps uh, among many others. So this is another challenge. 
that we are also working a lot with uh, this year. And there's a lot of people involved in this, no? Um, I, I just mentioned the friend from, from Seedbank, but there are a lot more. And, and I want to give also all the, all the credit, as I said before, to Eugenio in, in the hub, who is helping a lot. Uh, Vladimir is also helping a lot. Uh, and I think Dr. Ravi, Ravi Singh, uh, he's really leading this uh, amazingly. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a whole team teamwork, team effort. And there are a lot of people that I'm not mentioning, of course, but, uh, but there is so much, so many people involved here that should uh, have the credit. And uh, well, there are still a lot of challenges. Uh, there are also a lot of experiences and there are some data. So for, uh, for, for us, for the company in Yucatan, I think uh, we have to keep validating some seeds and some arrangements of, and managements uh, of, of different crops. Um, and also spreading, spreading and promoting the, the use of them uh, to tackle all these challenges that, that I mentioned in the, in the first uh, slide, you know, such as the monocrops, the nutrition, the, the pests and, and the weeds, etc. And I, I would say we are still, as we say in Spanish, we are we are in diapers here, no? Estamos en pañales because we're we're starting. We're we have some experiences, but so we're definitely not the most knowledgeable people. We are learning as we as we go. So it would be great to also have your input, everyone here listening to this, your critical opinions, your inputs, your questions, so we can keep building this uh, in a better way. And I think this is it. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I put some uh, hashtags there, important to, to share. So Agricultura para la Paz, Agriculture for Peace. And there's my, my email and my uh, the Twitter of the hub in case you want to reach out or being in contact now if you if you know if you think you can you have something that you can uh, complement or you can give to this uh, thing your knowledge or experience that would be also great because we need a lot of hands and a lot of people for this you know it's a collaborative effort so thank you very much i'm here for questions i hope i can answer them thank you very much eduardo thank you very much for this very interesting presentation uh, we have one question here. You have also given examples on this, but um, I'm going to read the question. Are the farmers familiar with eating these crops? Sometimes introducing new crops meets uh, with an obstacle that the producers only view the crops for cash and hence ignore their own food needs. Yes, definitely. It's a very important question. We, we asked this, uh, the same in the beginning. Um, some of these crops, for example, monk bean, uh, luckily have uh, been adapted. So some farmers, there are a couple of them, not all of them, but a couple are just, they just want to try. They, they, they give it a try. They're like, well, sure. I mean, as, as, as long as they, they read a little bit on the internet, the, the ones that have access to internet, they read a little bit, they make sure that it's something that somewhere else in the world or someone else have, have experiences. And they read, no, Mong Bin is eaten in, in India. Oh, okay, they eat in India. Well, I will try it. I will see. I will cook it because they are they are scientists, honestly. So they do whatever it takes. They try. They test different cooking times, and they just try it. And luckily, mung bean is one that they have uh, liked from farmers. So they have adopted to some local dishes. You know? There's one very nice local dish called Frijol con Puerco, and they have now now make uh, uh, mungo con Puerco. <laughs> some of them. So. We, we're we're looking that in that way that some farmers have, uh, even though they were not uh, adapted or used to these crops, they have been open enough to, to try them and they like them. Uh, some of some others, um, I don't have an example right now in mind, but some others maybe they haven't tried yet. They don't feel maybe curious or they just don't want to try. But that's a very important factor. No? Sometimes we we want to intervene, include new crops. We even consider that people are just not used to them or don't like them or they just don't need them. So it's a very important one. And I think that's also a filter in the end in the future if, if a crop is great to, uh, uh, for a pest control reason. Uh, if people uh, don't like it for local dishes or there's no market for them, well, in the, in the end it's a filter and it will start to appear. You know? People are not going to uh, uh, plant it. So it's a very important factor, and, and luckily some crops have been already adapt, been adapted. We we are also this year slowly uh, trying to make um, collaborations with some 
for example, uh, students uh, or not, maybe some chefs, but it's a little bit hard to reach the chef and really to get them on board. But maybe some students from uh, cooking schools, so they can really adapt them in, in a way to uh, some local dishes, and in that way we can promote them better. And also with the um, with the health uh, ministry or health health institute, uh, there's a, a thing here called uh, dieta de la milpa or, or dietas locales or uh, in promoting a lot the, the consumption of legumes. So through the Ministry of Health, they also kind of promote you know, what we do because they say, well, these legumes are great for consumption, are great for nutrition. And especially now that there is so much diabetes. You know, I recently, a couple of days ago, on Mother's Day, actually, I listened to this seminar on diabetes in Mayan community. And it's a very, uh, um, I mean, it's, it's, there, there's just a lot of diabetes. So, the, the, the health ministry was uh, promoting these crops. So even if farmers don't know some of these legume crops, because the health institute or ministry says they are good, they are willing to try as well. So I hope I, I answer that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have another question comment. Uh, great work. These are very exciting results and a lot of opportunities for sustainable intensification of maize systems and maybe with systems as well in some geographies through relay uh, cropping on short duration legumes under single wheat crop systems for sustainable and nutrition agri-food systems. But given the crops which are mandated to the CG centers, have we included this in one CG uh, concept notes already in our concept notes uh, of the CGR already? Also, something can be learned from South Asia and African experience. Thank you. This is in view of new focus on agroecology, regenerative agriculture. Also, this is important. Yes, yes, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, yes, for, for wheat systems, very important as well. We, we don't have wheat here, that's why I didn't mention it. But of course, in the north, I think my, my colleague, uh, the hub manager in the north, um, Jose Luis Velasco, I think he's working a little bit with this. I believe there is some peanut and soy uh, and other rotations in the north where, where there's also wheat, but also in Bajio no? and a lot of regions in Mexico. So of course, important for wheat systems as well. Um, for the concept note thing, that's a great question. I can tell you from my side uh, that the, the what I've done in this in this uh, department, no, in the, in the concept notes, I haven't. I, well, once I, I did, I did include them for the milpa, um, the milpa system. Uh, so I, I think it is being slowly considered there. But it's a very important remark. I think whoever is listening and working in concept notes, I think this is an important topic to um, to include because indeed it's uh, it's about not just the crop but the whole system and this. Uh, alternative crops are part of the system so they should be included in concept notes and i am um, i i guess it can be there's a lot to learn from southeast asia i think they mentioned Southeast asia or or south africa i don't remember i think southeast asia but um, i am not sure exactly what would you meant so if we can share some of these experiences with me that would be great because uh, i would love to learn from also different regions um, and so I think that's, that's about it. Thank you, Eduardo. Um, also, we have a, another one. Uh, it says, have you been able to test improved materials from Equisat, uh, sorghum and peanut, or from IITA, uh, cowpea, pigeon pea, and Icarda, like chickpea and lentil? Their international nurseries are available on request. And we have a comment related to this one. Uh, great work. You can check the experience of Semilla Nueva in Pinjum P in Guatemala. They have tested a number of Icrisat early duration varieties. Okay, I'm just quickly going to write it down. Semilla Nueva in Guatemala. Um, I haven't heard about this one, but uh, that's a great one. Thank you very much. And regarding the, the seeds, um, I, I, I I'm actually I'm not gonna lie. I'm not sure. I can, I think Dr. Rafi can can answer that. I'm I believe I mean he has a lot of contacts there in Ikrisat and Ricarda, and so some of the seeds 
uh, he's the one that gets uh, them, them for us. So I'm not sure the precise location from they, they, they come from, where they come from, but uh, I'm sure it's a, it's a joint, uh, joint uh, a collaboration uh, with, uh, within the CGR. So I believe they come from there, but I cannot tell you for sure. I can, I can do that research for you, or if Dr. Ravi is here, maybe he can, he can help us. Thank you very much. Um, okay, Ravi. Uh, okay, our requirement is more long for uh, for long duration. That's uh, his response. Our our requirement is more for long duration. Okay. okay. Um, there is one comment regarding post harvest uh, technologies, um, and one, there is one question and one answer given by uh, our expert uh, Silvano Sojo. Uh, the question says, uh, why the post-harvesting technology is not used broadly? Was it due to lack of awareness, money, or any else? And then Silvanus uh, responds, uh, regarding the post-harvest technologies for beans, farmers believed hermetic bags are not effective in minimizing losses due to broadsheets uh, resistance. So through this project, we show them that with good control or of grain handling, for example, system systematic with knowing and solariz solarization before storage, hermetic bags work very well. The bags are not adopted for various reasons, but mainly due to a lack of awareness and physical and economic access. Yes, indeed, that's uh, also a little bit of the, the challenge I put there in the end. That, uh, of course, that's a part of it. And maybe I, I didn't mention, but of course, hermetic bags are not the only uh, Post harvest uh, technology, you know, there are so many, and maybe this is one of the, the ones that have dragged more attention. Um, but there are actually a lot of local technologies, for example, in the uh, sorry, for maize specifically, there's uh, uh, but there are certain systems that my community use here, but that's only for maize. Uh, but they also they, they store things in uh, Coca Cola pet plastic bottles, no? or in, in the, the ones we call garrafones, which is a water tank of 20 liters, they store them. And sometimes they, they also help and they don't cost as much as a, a metric uh, plastic bag, or even the use of, of some powders that uh, do this, ab ab uh, how, do you, how do you say that, abrasive, abrasive. When, you know, when, when you have friction with something and they kind of break the outer part of, of some uh, organism, so abrasive, I, I believe it is. So there are a lot of technologies and plastic bags is just one of them, which is slowly getting the attention, but also the, these this, uh, powders are, are very helpful and the local uh, technologies such as plastic, simple plastic bottles. Yeah. Thank you, Eduardo. Uh, well, time has already uh, come. It, uh, our seminar is almost uh, to our end. So would you like to give a final comment? Um, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you very, everyone very much for your time, for listening to this, for your questions, for your interest. Uh, there's my email. I don't want to, to remove this page because you can write my email. So I would be happy if you can give some more live questions, critical opinions, whatever to add more to this project because, because uh, I'm sure everyone has something to, to share and to, um, to give to this, to this work. So thank you very much and let's keep in touch. Thank you very much, Eduardo. I would like to um, appreciate uh, Eduardo, uh, Eduardo Tobar Lopez, Hub Manager of Yucatan of the Integrated Development Program, uh, who presented this uh, seminar, Crop Diversification in May Systems in the Yucatan Peninsula, Experiences and Challenges. Uh, he has already provided his email, so you can contact uh, him for further discussion or any other contribution to this uh, important and interesting pro project that can be uh, re uh, replicated in other regions and also to uh, contribute to the CGR uh, system and the CGR improvement uh, crop management, uh, crop um, uh, research. Uh, thank you very much, stay well. Thank you very much, Eduardo. Thank you very much to the audience. Take care and stay well. Thank you. Thank you very thank much, Eduardo. take care, everyone. Congrats, thank you, bye-bye. Thank you.